let's let's spend two minutes here on Goron before we take the break and yeah, bring yeah. Blake Murphy in on the other side. Sure, sure. Because I'm sure people are going to ask, so how are we going to evaluate the Kyle Lowry sign-in trade? Because everybody was like, okay, let's wait till what they get for Goron, and then we'll know the final pieces. So officially, the Raptors get Thaddeus Young and Precious Achua, and obviously a bit of a swap in the draft capital. How do we evaluate the Kyle Lowry sign-in trade now that it's quote-unquote finalized? Um, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. I think, look, the thing with sign-in trades is this. Um, this was a very unique case. The Raptors, honestly, I think the, the, the optics of the DeMar trade, even though, to me, they're fantastic, they just acquired Kawhi Leonard and they won the championship. That's the end of the story for me. But I think, obviously, um, how your reputation carries around the league and stuff like that, that's a hard thing to, to see. Right, a guy who done that much for your franchise, blindsided like that, you, you cannot, under any circumstances, do that same thing to the other franchise player at that time, which that being Kyle. So you go into that situation um, and you you go into the last year's trade deadline. Clearly, they were willing to move him. They were willing to move Norm. They moved Norm, right? But uh, there were, you know, other rumored deals. You know, the Raptors were talking to the Lakers. We're talking to the Sixers, talking to the Heat. Ultimately speaking, all those other teams kind of passed. Sixers went for George Hill for some reason. The Heat went for Victor Oladipo for some reason. And the Lakers just aren't an appealing trade. Oh, the domino effect of the Lakers not somehow getting Kyle Lowry last year to where they are right now. I didn't want anybody from the Lakers, though. I know. That's the thing. Like, But I just want to point out, so many teams in the West are down horrendously right now. Yeah, the West the West is trash. I'm not going to lie to you. The West <laughs> is really bad, and the East is way better right now, especially given the what's happened in the trade deadline so far with the Raptors acquiring Thad Young. Um, <laughs> so if you if you were to give a grade for the sign-in trade... No, you can't even grade it no, in a grade way it. because... Grade it. You're a high school teacher. You got to grade it. Yeah, it's a, it's a B-. minus. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Look, a sign-in trade... Look, you get Precious... You get Thad Young, who you can use in your rotation for a year. Um, you move down slightly in the draft. You get some draft. You get some like trade exceptions. You move a it's little really bit. It's really the, the most. Like, it's really the most you can maneuver. You basically, within. you only got precious. That's what yeah, I'm trying to say. It's, but it's the most you can do in a trade sign and trade scenario. You're never gonna come out. It's the most you can do in a trade in, a sign and trade scenario if you want to comply with what Kyle wanted. That's fair. And all Kyle that's wanted fair. to do was sign with Miami. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's or fair. be traded to Miami. And Miami, knowing that he wanted to come to Miami, he, literally there's a tampering investigation of this. So That's every, right. The Raptors should get five first-round picks. Uh, absolutely. Adam Silver, Mark Tatum, Kiki Vandeweghe. <laughs> it's Joe Smith Those all are their over names. Again. Those are their names. Email them. Yeah. Uh, you know, if that's what you know, then the, the Heat weren't really going to give up that much for him. So ultimately, they get, they get precious for him. Again, you don't get that much in sign of trades. It's not just the Raptors decided, oh... We will take Kyle Lowry in a vacuum and as good of a player he is and we're going to trade him for just Precious, Stad Young and and move some picks around. No, but it's completely fair. At the same time, you know, if our people are, you know, disappointed or sort of unsatisfied, I, I get it as well because it's not like you got this huge haul, especially because I think people have a really high standard for what the Raptors do with trades given the fact that you can just list them off. Like all the, the, the Raptors, generally speaking, Make these very very good trades. Yeah, this was uh, actually this was, what this we was were just gonna, a regular trade. This was actually what we we're gonna do. Just list off all of Masai's trades in the first hour. Thankfully, yeah, that, was, that was our contingency plan. If nothing got thankfully moved the, the trade, trade was gonna the trade happened. I was gonna ask you where were you when the Kawhi trade happened and all of this stuff. Lastly, real quickly on Goran Dragic, and we're gonna ban him from this program. So Goran is headed to San Antonio. Uh, all expectations are he's gonna get bought out. And Chris Haynes of Yahoo Sports reported earlier today that the Dallas Mavericks are favorites to land Goron. So I guess Goron potentially could end up where he wanted to be all along. Do you want to say a farewell to the Goron Dragic era in Toronto? Yeah, so everyone knows me as um, the person who watches warm-ups very intently. And my lasting Goran Dragic memory will be early in the season, Dallas Mavericks come to Toronto. And he was still with the team at that time. Not playing, but with the team. Pre-game, he comes out mad early. Okay. He sits down, talks courtside, sits down with Boban, chats him up for a while. Great how time. Do, how do you remember this in full detail, by the way? Because I knew at that time this guy's a traitor, and I'm not. I was not happy with this. I don't care. Do that. Do that stuff behind the scenes. There's restaurants. You know, at that time the city was more open. Go for dinner with your with your friends afterwards. You know, go for dinner before. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Two hours before he's chatting with Boban. That's cool, man. Everyone loves Boban. Luca comes over, chats with Luca. Yeah, that's cool. You know, like you know. <laughs> 
like how many Slovenian players in the NBA, right? Like clearly there's a brotherhood. They won the the, the Euro League title together or the, the the Euro Basket title together, which was a great run by Goran, by the way. Um, then their coach from that run comes over, Igor Kokoshkov. He was the assistant coach with the Mavericks, and he was the head coach of that Slovenian team at that time. He comes over to chat. Mark Cuban comes over to chat, right? Um, trainers come over to chat from the Mavericks. And at some point, I'm just like, are you going to warm up and do your job today? And that was his answer. No, the whole time. Now, I'm not saying, oh, yeah, you can't talk to you know the guys around the league. That's cool. I'm not even kidding. This went on for an hour plus. People were around. Have some shame. Do your job. I'm so I'm just sick of this guy. Like I'm genuinely sick of this guy. I knew obviously the history coming into this was he tripped OG Ananobi by on the floor, reaching out and tripping a guy, grabbing his foot. That's a dirty play. Right? Damar got into it with this guy. He we played him many years with the Heat. Did not like this guy. He comes in before he even comes in. This is this team. This is the Raptors. I got higher ambitions than playing for the Raptors. So he wants to get bought up by the Mavericks, who are one game above the Raptors in the standings right now. Yeah, anyway. What's uh, up, man? Not going to be remembered fondly. That's Farewell. what I'm trying to say. Farewell to Goran Dragic.